It's about 4.30 in the morning and i uh, got things i got to do. My life is different from most. But uh, let's, uh, let's see what the die will tell us. And we are going to, we're going to take her up and we're going to look at this overdrive unit that I paid a damn lot of money for. Uh, and everything else. So I, I guess I guess I got what I what I paid for. But this thing leaks oil out of the overdrive like crazy. And uh, um, I, I, how long I've been at this? Like eight months. And then you know you got tier four. You got Gilda. You, you, you know you, you, you lose everybody here is a problem. So this thing has been, oh, I don't remember where that is. This has been sitting here for I don't know how long. This is a, a Lucas uh, so long in here forever. So let's take this thing up. So you got to do this at night so you can really see where the leaks are. And my feeling is the leaks are everywhere. And I'm not going to get any gaskets. I'm going to... Oh, oh, that reminds me. I've got to make sure that my... my uh, uh, ultra gray is uh, viable. Oh, let's take a look. Is that the ultra gray? Let me see if this is still any good. I truly can't believe it, but uh, this tube of ultra gray is still viable. Okay, we'll get the UVs out and we'll check this in a second. Okay, so I've gone up and I'm gonna let her down on the chop. You know you got it because this will move. Okay. So make make sure that your lift is secure on all the posts. Oh, I got about 18 minutes until sunrise. So let's grab this and we're going to go over and turn this off. What we're gonna do, turn this on to light our way. Let's see. Okay, nice and dark. So there's spats. And she's uh such a rare car with the solid metal wheels. So uh we're gonna do the UV thing. So let's just, um, I don't wanna look at this too much. Oh, there's some uh, stuff. Okay. Look. My oh, gosh. Leaks everywhere. Uh. And I paid for this. This is what you get. See the drips uh, there? That That's just uh, the, the reaction from pull ties, from me trying to make it stop leaking, from me paying somebody to help me. Look, look, look at all of that mess. So uh, we're going to pull all this out of here and uh, regasket it. Oh, God. Ugh. And I think the, uh, oh, we're going to replace that right there. I don't think that that, uh, is working correctly. Uh, what a bloody flipping mess. 
All right, see where I've tried to make it stop with all the other sealants and JB Weld, and it's still, you see the drip of oil here? It's, it's just... I guess they did the best. Doesn't that remind you of the Nash healing? So, uh... And there's a screen up in here that you got to clean too. So we'll, we'll do all that. We're, we're going to clean everything up. It looks like it's visibly drip, dripping now. So, all right, we'll fix it. Well, let's get started. Let me tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to uh, drain the differential and uh, change it. And uh, that's this is an interesting set up here because this this car has what's called a pan hard rod and the pan hard rod is a rod that's mounted to in this case the left side uh wheel hub and it crosses all along here and goes into right here i changed the bushings on this this thing's incredibly light but for those of look at the original fuel cell numbers i'll be danged and uh so anyway and there's the drain for that if ever you wanted to, uh, if you got the original cell. But uh, the Panhard Company, which I believe is a French car company, I actually have some advertisements for them uh, up in a 1958 road and track I have. But the Panhard Company uh, was somewhat innovative for, you know, the French are, are interesting people. And as I like, the, as everybody says, nobody does anything like the French, and the French don't do anything like anybody else. So that's the way they are. So. Let's clean this up, drain this, and refill. There's your real, I, look at that. I could put a little grease in there, couldn't I? You ain't gonna get no grease in that one, short of going inside the car. Little, tiny little drive shaft in this car. Uh, short, that is. And then there's your oil drops here. Uh, so what we're gonna do is, we're going to take these out. If I can get them out, we're going to take this out to drain this. This is real old school right here because the, the later ones have that funky tool that everybody just uses channel locks on. Uh, we won't be doing that. I don't know if this is metric or standard. Let's, let's go for uh, a fractional measurement here. And I'm gl glad to have this. Uh, 1 and 13 64ths, which comes to about 31 millimeters. We'll see how that works. So we're gonna take that off. Uh, okay, on off. Uh, we're going to hose this down first. We're going to check these bolts up in here and make sure they're tight uh, for the tail drive. There's nothing leaking out of the back seal, which is good. Uh, it's a little drippy there, huh? So we'll see what we can do about getting those tightened up. There's this ankle drive for the speedometer cable. Uh, there is the solenoid we discussed. I'm going to uh, see if I can get this gunk off of here. And I know these side shafts leaked uh, rather substantially. So uh, that seems to be working fairly well. So I'm not going to mess with that. And then there are very definite adjustments on how to... Uh, uh, on how to set up this solenoid thing. And I'm just gonna try to tighten everything I can where I can get it. So we're probably going to take uh, this off this panel right here. Uh, this is really hard to get off. It doesn't look to be weeping too badly. Those are weeping. And I'm gonna see about getting them off. Let's just start with this. Uh, I'll tell you now, uh, you, you find these in innies and outies. Uh, they're 7 sixteenths. Uh, this will work. Uh, 3 eighths will do her. Always make sure that you take off your filler plug first. It really shouldn't be in there too hard. You want to make sure that's out or loose. Because if that don't come loose, you're going to have a hard time getting it to fill up again. Uh, there's lots of ways of doing that, so this is, uh, let's see how, how full it is. 
Yep, so you just got plenty on it, but that's not the point. Uh, and it looks pretty clear, but I don't care. Uh, I want to change it anyway. It just pays to do it uh, once every three or four years. It's not an expensive practice. And these are generally very heavily, uh, uh, how can I say, abused or neglected. Uh, and that is just a recipe for disaster. <sighs> because even if you change it, there's still a lot of dirt in there. I will, let's just take a look at it and see what she looks like here. Let's get her down here a little bit. She probably looks pretty clean to me. I imagine I did it four years ago, maybe. Yeah, see, it's not as, not as pretty as you think. And uh, actually, like I say, it's not terrible. And I can tell I did it because I have the, the uh, tape on it. I don't know how much it holds. It just holds to this upper level, a quart and a half, more or less, depends on your axle. And what I'm going to do is get some brake clean after this drains for a while and uh, clean it all out. I actually can see, uh, yeah, little bits of, little bits of not good, but this, it's not gears or anything. It's just, it's just dirt. So let's just get that dirt out of there. Remember, this is what lubricates your, your wheel bearings too, so you want to get this as clean as you possibly can. So take your plugs and go back there and wire wheel them and clean them up good. I can't tell you to put a magnet in there because I just don't think you should uh, in this case. So let's get, uh, let's get a nice clean container and just see what we get out of this thing. And that's got the see uh you get you get that out of there and uh, i think that would uh it's got some some dirty chunks in there i don't know if you can see them but there they are and that's one of the reasons you do that okay let's move on to the other thing i'm going to throw that outside i don't want that flammable mess too much of it in uh in my oil catch okay let's em empty this out so I'm trying to be nice about it okay all right Boink. okay there goes that uh, now I have discovered that this is a 30 millimeter. 30 millimeter fits it pretty nicely. So let's see what we get out of this. Uh, let's get up on the level here. Keep it good and firm. And I knew it would take every bit of this breaker bar. I knew it would take every bit of it, and it did. And let's try her again. All righty. Now, make sure you got your screen in the bottom of your catch pan. Or something because you don't want any little parts falling out of here and having to dig through them with the old and the old oil now I don't know what condition that gaskets in okay. let's just see what this oil looks like uh, lots of sealant on there now there's gum might be some stuff fall out of here so have both hands ready uh -oh. Yeah, there's the screen. See, that oil's not terrible. 
But if you look in there, you'll see dirt coming out of that thing. See, right there, there's metals in there. So the oil looks pretty good, but don't, don't depend on that, okay? All right, give me a harumph. Okay, now we're gonna open the other one once I get the oil off my hands. So this is not a place for tolerance of dirt at all. So let's see if I can get down there a little bit. Oh, kind of rough on you there, wasn't I? Ugh, so don't, whew, smells funny. Oh, I think I'm letting the oil drip on me. I almost was anyway. I did actually, from the axle. Okay, let's get the front off. Okie doke. Let's see how bad this is. Uh, not any worse than I thought it would be. I might let that drain for a very long time. Oh. Another trip to the wire wheel here. Guess I need to find me a 7 sixteenths key. Oh. It don't smell good. It smells a little boint. Just a little bit. So. I wonder if I have the, let's see what comes out of here. Oh, see, you get a whole lot out of that too. So one is the gearbox and one is the overdrive. So you gotta do both of them. And you gotta make sure you put the right oil back in this. Do not assume that it is uh, gear oil, okay? Uh, look it up. Some of these gearboxes take 20W50 oil, just motor oil. And uh, <coughs> if you want to use detergent, you may. So what do you think? I don't want to mess up any tools right now. So let's just let this gluck out of here for a while. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll see about pulling that solenoid. So what fits this best is in eight millimeter. And let's make sure we're on the off position. Tell you what, let's dab that a little tiny bit. And uh, with my already very oily, we'll go out in the burn pile immediately. Piece of cloth there. Okay, let's see what's in here. Oh, there comes some more. Well. Tool's all oiled up, that's good. All right, let's just go for it and see what it, there, I think there's a seal up in here. I haven't done this in a very long time. Uh, let's see what's in here. Don't lose any of this stuff. That's not very dirty, that's, that's okay. But all of this will be hitting, the, see that's a very special stuff there. So don't lose it. And uh, this is gonna be hitting the ultrasonic because that is the best way. First, I'm gonna brake clean it and then ultrasonic it. So to get every little bit of stuff outside out of the mesh. So, uh, yeah, I think everything else up in there looks good. Oh, and there's the original English, old English white color. Uh, it's right there. That's kind of a very uh, almondy looking color. It's not very bright or chipper, but that's okay. I'm going to go to handheld because this is just too hard to dance around. There's my new hex key kit. Hopefully that's going to come in handy in just a minute. Uh, here is your, uh, your so I'm going to have to do this this way. There's your solenoid up in there and you see that nut right here. But for what you, for, for just decency and all, you can see there's probably way too much. I oh, know you can't. You, yeah, maybe you can. I don't know. It's just almost impossible to get light up in there. But there is a, 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 an adjustment here. And you have to keep in mind the solenoid thing. 
So there is about that much in there. And that thing's got a little bit of magnetism to it. So you, you can probably hear in the background the ultrasonic is going. So let's see if we can get these two big plugs out of here. These are 18 millimeter. Uh, oh, yeah, there goes one. Okay, let's try this one. Yeah, that one was kind of loose. <laughs> well, you can't trust anybody, can you? I cleaned it off, but it, it was leaking before. So, uh, let's see if we can get these out with our hands now. Drop these in. Let's see what their dirt field looks like behind them. I don't think I've got copper washers that big. So what does that look like? Well, there's a little bit of dirt there. Uh, I don't know. Well, let's try this one. And I see dirt coming down out of there. Now, when it comes to shooting brake clean in this sucker, I wouldn't do that. Uh, because you've got the clutches on the overdrive unit. And I don't think I would suggest that you futz around with any unusual chemicals when it comes to those. And uh, yeah, see the dirt rolling down there? Now, I might uh, holly go lightly, see the dirt pouring out of there, uh, around those threads. And I'm going to see about uh, getting those uh, washers off. Now, I'm going to do that. If they come off, I'll let you know. But I need both hands. I don't want to drop them because I don't want them to get distorted or dirty on the floor. Okay. There's more dirt coming out of there than I imagined. Those washers do come off. Uh, here they are. So they're getting ready to take a little bath and a little dawn. And then they'll hit the ultrasonic and we'll just kind of blow the dirt off of them. Uh, okay. So there's the way too much light angle. And this is what's been coming out of here the whole time. And got to be careful. Don't let it drip on your head. This is very painful because this arm adjuster here is uh, spinning. So you've got to get a wrench on the top and bottom and you're in this kind of place. So I'm gonna take uh, this loose to get this little shield right here off. Uh, and then that's gonna give me some room to get up in there. There ain't no way I can show, I'll show you after I get it off. Uh, what I'm talking about on that adjustment arm and I think that that is way out of adjustment uh, the other thing that I learned was that the adjusting screw that I was showing you the distance in a little bit ago was it just floats here it, that that ain't right there's some there's something very wrong with that had a nut on the bottom of it and that ain't gonna ever do and I don't know uh, exactly what that situation is up there. I'll show you a trick on that in a minute. Let me get this shield off. And that'll give me a throw to get a wrench on the top of this bolt here. Uh, gotta take this panel off anyway. And I'm hoping I'll be able to do that. So I've gotten this loose. If you can see it, that arm there. Uh, the solenoid is up there. I apparently hardwired it. I don't think that it's supposed to be that way, but you just sometimes I just do it just to. Uh, it's supposed to have a push-on connector like that. Will I hardwire this one? Yes, yes I will. Uh, so uh, I'm going to cut this wire on going to this solenoid. But I'm going to leave enough to, you know, have it as a backup or test it and play with it or whatever. So let me show you the trick here. So see your finger right there. So when you got a bolt, like on the top of the solenoid, you can just push on it for a few seconds and it'll tell you what it is. See, it's a crosshead. So you can just use your fingers as a little imprint. So let me, uh, let me cut that wire. 
and I'm trying to keep my tools in one place. So I'm going to cut this wire and leave me enough. There you go. To, to use to, to wire down. So that's been cut. Battery's disconnected. And so now I'm going to get a, a screwdriver and go tall there. And it looks like it's going to be one something like, uh, let's see if I can find a little one. Uh, I don't know. This is what I'm looking for right there. Let's see if this does her. So what I discovered was that screw where you see it's empty, that was stripped. Uh, where the wrong screw was in it. And uh, so the solenoid wasn't even being held on there properly. So I'm glad to find problems. I'm trying to remember the name of these guys that did this. This is when I had, about the time I had that major abdominal surgery. There's the solenoid. So I don't think it's bad, but I'm going to replace it since I have one. I think it was Sterling something in the Midwest. They were kind of crazy. Uh, I didn't like them very much. But luckily, I have my Wester Auto Wizard screwdriver. So there it is, Western Auto Chrome Van Vanadium or whatever you call that stuff in Wizard. There you go. Okay, I think I've got this about cracked loose here. So here is the trouble arm. Okay, make sure, make note that it goes that way on the thing. Of course, it can't go another way, can it? Okay, so I'm about ready to, uh, let's see if I can get that one bolt out. Because the second I cracked this, oil started cut more oil started coming out of her. All right, I think there's some spring tension in there. Here we go. I do remember there's some springs in there. Okay, don't take this cover off. <laughs> don't do that. Uh, I looked it up. I had forgotten there was a lot of springs in there, and that's very dangerous. So I did. I'm gonna. I've cracked it loose and cleaned the stuff off best I can. And I'm going to pack this with some uh, ultra gray and just uh, that screw it goes all the way into here. And uh, I just I just forgot. It's just been so flipping long since I've messed with this. But do not take that cover off unless you are a professional. And you might want to remember to put an O-ring on this shaft. It's one bad mother. And you can tell right there why that's leaking. I can't focus my eyes on that right there but there's a shaft right there and you can see oil just coming out of it so you will discover that once you get the arm off you'll find this back there and uh, a spacer so my guess is that thing hardly even moves i mean it does not move much at all so i'll probably just put a little uh, air conditioning o-ring back there or something and just try to get it firm and not have to worry about lubricating it because it's oily enough. So let's uh, let's get the old uh, da -da -da, brake clean out and uh, clean this up and clean out the dirt from here. See, look at that. See, now there's a clean finger and there's the front one. See, look at that. And so I don't know how many thousands of miles is on this, but not enough to constitute that. Uh, maybe maybe the, maybe it's true, but I'm going to clean this thing out some with some brake clean, and I don't want my camera around that. So, like I say, I'm going to have to come up with some kind of strategy to uh, get those things threaded. I can get my fingers in up there, and uh, I'll just pack in silicone around that and let it cure for a couple hours and then kind of pinch it. I'm not going to gook it in there too much, but just enough. Okay, uh, just trying to catch some stuff there. Oh, it hooked on something. Oh, it's just sticky. We're gonna have to go to tomorrow here pretty soon. So, but anyway, these two uh, things up here that, uh, something big coming. So right there where that screw's going in right there, that is, uh, you can tell that's pretty chalky. What the hell is that? Oh, it's a bunch of motorcycles. Okay, good, brethren. Okay, so I'm going to probably just put a screw through the top and then put a nut on the bottom 
and I think these are 832s. I've got to, I'm just gonna let this thing drain overnight. Well, that was, that was painful, wasn't it? Yeah, 832s, these are super long. I probably got some other ones in here, 1032s, 830s, I'll find something. Yeah, there's some 832s there. And uh, once I get, uh, I might, when I get back uh, this morning, uh, I'll like come down here and see if I can get the the ultra gray around here. Probably just start right here and just do it that way. So let's just wipe all that down and try not to wipe it down in there. As I cleaned it best I could, but stuff still falling out of there. You should have seen the stuff I got out of there. I mean, it was amazing. And uh, so, okay. Look at that, see the oil still coming out of there. So let's just let that drain overnight. And then when I come, I'll break clean it and come back later. And this is gonna be a long process. Already has been a long process. So let's just let it go. Okay, so according to a uh, whole oil here, that thing right there, engine and gearbox lubrication in this vehicle. Yours may vary. Is 20W50. All conditions. Let's see. Uh, 5 centigrade 41. Yeah, that'll be good enough. Don't put any additives in there, for God's sakes. Just use good quality 2050. I prefer Schaefer's or whatever that is, stuff I got. Are they just Castrol's fine? Whatever you want to do. Look at all these old names. Shell Super. So let's. Uh, Let's go to the overdrive unit for B and Force. All right, I guess I might get in copyright trouble, but that's part of it. Here's that big spring uh, that I don't want to mess with. Uh, there is no gasket there, so they did not put a gasket there. Sorry, mofos. And uh, what do they call that 59 thing? Uh, just solenoid shield. And then there's uh, all this stuff up here that I... Remember messing with the little ball check valve and all that. The overdrive does work. It just doesn't, you know, it just pops out. So here's all the stuff we took out. There is no seal up here. I, I, I think maybe MGBs, I can't remember. You know, often Healy is a mixture of a Jaguar and an MGB. So, you you know, you just kind of got to get used to it. So here's, here's where we are. Here's what we're doing. And uh, let's see what 16 is. Uh, adjusting screw so that was adjusting nothing uh, and uh, so there's your little cheese head screws that hold those in we're gonna have to do something a little different there uh, I don't think we need to worry about this gasket uh, because like I say I'm just gonna do something else but see here uh, where's the rod uh, there's the uh, I think 11 is the valve operating shaft and then there's supposed to be a seal behind that. I bet that's not there because it leaks like a sieve, uh, oil seal. It's either not there or whatever. And uh, then that thing right there is 13 that we found earlier today. And that's they could just call it a collar and a spacer. Now, there is no seal between the collar and the pan, the plate here. Uh, I... Uh, you know, I'm starting to feel like I could pull this off, but I don't think I will. If it if it malfunctions again, it could be some of you know these seals, which I think you can still get. But uh, I'm gonna have to put a seal between the collar and the and this plate. Um, let's see, and uh, 51. They call that a solenoid lever housing or lever housing. And lever housing. So I'm gonna just try to have to do something about sealing here. Cause you can clearly see oil just running right down where they where they fouled this up. And the funny thing about this shaft that runs all the way through over here to the, uh, that is called the spring, the set, setting lever, lever. And that, remember that's made out of brass. This thing sort of goes back and forth when it actuates it, it, it sort of, it sort of does this kind of thing. 
So uh, anyway, that that's where we are in this world. Let's, and this is where you make your adjustment over here. Is I think I think that's right. I can't remember. So we'll worry about that later.